Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen. You might be wondering, what is this podcast about and who is it for? Well, it's on this podcast that we talk about the challenges that we face each and every day and the choices that we make. We can always turn to God about anything. This message message is for each and every one of us, regardless of how good things are going for you right now or how deep and dark your troubles might be. You could be a devout believer in the Lord or someone who questions everything. In this podcast, we ask questions like, how can I overcome this? Am I alone? How can my broken heart be healed? And is there a good future for me? My favorite scripture for this podcast is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. During this 15 or so minute episode, I just want to assure you that I'm not going to be lecturing down at you. I'm not going to be yelling and preaching at you. Rather, I'm sharing what I've learned in my journey and I'm still learning. We learn together, and I encourage you to share what you have learned. Your testimony is important, and someone needs to hear it. Someone will resonate with what you have to say. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you now. Help me, Lord, to share your word, your mercy, your wisdom, and your healing for us all in this episode. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Right now, we're all deep into the series addressing topics that are common life issues that, you know, we can all relate to. During the past several weeks, we addressed the opinion of others, toxic people, the question, are you negative, and financial troubles, and then last week, are you in fear? Well, if you missed any of these, I hope that you'll go back and watch or listen to them. Our topic for today's episode is, does your age or your appearance bother you? I believe I'm in a great position to talk on this topic since I am currently 67 years old. My age and appearance have both drastically changed over the years. I think I remained as as a quite attractive woman until the last decade, and I was still turning heads. But then, you know, menopause happened, for men, it's midlife crisis, with the chemistry changing suddenly in my body and my mind. It included extreme mood changes, mood swings, and it was hard to keep my emotions balanced. I felt older. Suddenly, I felt older. And I looked older, too. I think that was partly because of my disposition at the time. I feel like I, I, I got older, and then after that period of my life was over, I I got kind of (laughs) younger. Anyway, I gained weight, not just a little bit. I gained about 30 pounds, and I think that's um, typical. One thing I began to, to avoid was to look in the mirror, and I didn't really recognize who I was in the mirror anyway. But this episode is not just about women. Men go through stuff too. They call it midlife crisis. We're used to a certain amount of energy stamina that goes with our age and we're getting noticed for our appearances so we kind of capitalize on that and then poof we're able to not able to do the things that we used to do and we took it for granted and we're not getting the attention that we had become accustomed to in case i could convince myself that there wasn't that much of a difference i would occasionally run into someone i had known for some years and not seen them and they would be surprised. Sometimes I would just see their expressions and know that they were comparing me now to the me that they knew in the past, how much younger and more lovely I might have been. Rarely, but it did happen. I would be asked, what happened to you? Or, it's tough getting older, isn't it? It's like, hmm, I didn't ask for that. And I would feel to some extent ashamed of myself, as if there was anything real that I could do to stop the normal progression of age in my declining appearance. I suppose the measure of how much the change in our age and appearance bothers us has a correlation 
with how vain we might have been before that change. We all should want to be our very best health, and to look our best goes along with that. But when do we go too far? When do we cross the line? It's a gray area. What does it mean to be vain? According to the internet definition, and I'm reading it now, vanity is excessive pride in or excessive pride in or admiration of one's own appearance or achievements. The synonyms are conceited, conceitedness, self-conceit, narcissism, and self-love. Wow. When you think of excessive pride or admiration of yourself, that's not good. That's a negative thing. We know from scriptures that God hates a prideful heart and is merciful to those that are humble. So that's what we should be more than pride. If prideful, if it was on a scale, we would want to be more humble. The synonyms included an extreme case of self-love, being narcissistic. And we see that in titleism. Entitlement more often than these days than in the past, or it seems that way. How do we know if we're running out of balance with our concerns over our looks in our age to the point of being excessive about it? I had a friend several years ago who was absolutely stunning and she was very intelligent. She had it all. She was beautiful and she had an awesome career. She had several guys in competition for her attention. She knew how to enjoy life, and she seemed to be carefree, having no stress in life. She was someone to really be in awe of. One day, she noticed that her nose had a small but ugly bump on it, and the more she looked at that bump, the more her concern grew. And it got to the point that she felt that anyone who looked at her would notice that little bump on her nose. So she was starting to get obsessive about it. And she became so self-conscious over it, she began to avoid getting photos. And she used to love to have photos of herself. She avoided receiving the normal attention that she had once enjoyed. It was very costly, but she determined that it was necessary to get rid of that bump. And so she underwent surgery to take care of that problem. But unfortunately, soon after, she learned that she had a terminal disease and the bump became a non-issue. It was no longer important. The lesson for me in that instance was this, life on earth is temporary. We have to remember that. We can spend our allotted time worrying over our age, our appearance, that are not important things, not important matters, and have a multitude of concerns over what we have and how we look, or we have choices. We can spend our valuable time on earth being happy with what we have and enjoy life. And that goes to gratitude, doesn't it? When we're grateful for what the Lord has given us, we're not being picky about it. We see examples all around us. Some people are happy with what they have, even if they're even if they're very old and gray, other people may never seem to be satisfied. Although from where we stand, we, they seem to have it all. It's all in our choices, in our attitude. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. Hmm, how far do we go with it? There are some things that we can do to fight the hands of time, to keep ourselves useful. We can apply healthy options eat better, exercise, get proper sleep, drink lots of water, and limit our stress. Essentially, we can deliberately live a healthy lifestyle. And it becomes more important as we get older. We don't take things for granted anymore. And that will be a positive factor toward our ability to enjoy what we have now with our age and our parents. It's different. But that doesn't need to feel like a negative thing at all. We can take drastic measures and spend lots and lots of money to fight the natural aging process and all that it entails. Every day, people are getting excess fat surgically removed 
and other parts are being enhanced. And usually if they do it once, then it becomes something that is easier and easier to do continually. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that. What does it take to bring each of us to the point of being satisfied with our own age and appearance? What are we willing to do to be happy about it? How can we make sure that we don't cross the line into pridefulness and vanity? It's a matter of choices and priorities, moderation being the key, and knowing our budget restraints and always being grateful. I think it's safe to take myself for an example. What I do is an attempt to practice a balanced healthy options, which would, which I mentioned before would include, I strive to limit the sugar in my diet. Oh my goodness, that's so hard right there because sugar is in everything. I can spend lots and lots of time reading the labels on the back of things, but it's, it's a very good idea to do. I exercise at least two times a week. I drink plenty of water and I get proper sleep. I take my vitamins regularly. And I keep those appointments with a doctor, take needed medicines, and I strive to be moderate in everything and so on. Well, what else? I believe that's where the attitude kicks in. I strive to have an attitude of gratitude for all that the Lord has given me each and every day. And I rejoice always and pray continually. Sure, I look the best I can. I use good hair and skin products. I wear makeup and nice appropriate clothes. And for the time being, I highlight my hair. But the plan is to gravitate to a more natural look, maybe this fall. Has this episode been helpful to you in striving to overcome the stress that is involved in your age and your appearance? I hope so. Do you have any suggestions to share? I would be remiss if I didn't take the few minutes to share about our Lord. Do we know how much God loves us? That we can come to Him with any problem. We can cast our cares on Him. We have the evidence of our Heavenly Father's love in the scriptures. I want to read John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus himself tells us in John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If we believe this, then we need to tell him, make a commitment. We have free will so we can make that decision. Regardless of where you stand today in your relationship with Jesus, I encourage you to please pray with me now and out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And I know that he suffered on the cross for me, even for my sins. And he defeated death and arose from the grave. But I'm a sinner and I need you to forgive me. I repent of my sins and I walk away from them now. But I need you to help me because I know that I will be tempted. I need you, Jesus, and I am helpless without you. I ask you now to come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. With this prayer, we're telling the Lord that we believe. We are sincerely choosing to walk away from our sinful life, and he'll help us in that. We are choosing to begin a relationship with him. How can we do that? How can we develop a relationship with the Lord? By studying and reading the Word of God and praying, we come to understand Him. And through prayer, we have a conversation with the Lord. We talk to Him and listen for His voice, for His response. We learn to know His expectations and obey Him, worship Him, and praise the Lord as He guides us. More and more, He will reveal our steps. In all of this, we're developing a deeper and deeper relationship with Jesus. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast today, the episode on Turn to God with Karen. I like to say a closing prayer right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you've brought us through in our lives. You are our strength and our refuge in times of trouble. Lord God, we pray, we ask that you save, heal, and protect all of our loved ones, all of their loved ones, our friends, our acquaintances, our community. Lord God, we sincerely pray for our country. We know that with God, all things are possible. Nothing is too great for you to handle. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive the sins of others against us. Thank you for your love, your compassion, and your mercy, dear Lord. And especially, dear God, we are thankful and grateful for your grace through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. You can download anytime. You can simply Google the podcast by name and find the episodes listed on the internet. This podcast is with stormtalk365radio.com. We're available on iTunes, Twitter, Alexa on Amazon, hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify, and our platform is Spreaker.com. Turn to God with Karen continues to go strong every Monday morning and as it has been for the past three and a half years. Other podcasts have been done in the past, such as Abundant Living with Karen and Moments with Karen, and they remain available in archives on Spreaker.com and on StormTalk365Radio.com, as well as my YouTube channel, Karen Jane Casey, on YouTube. I invite you to share your comments, your suggestions, any information you would like me to have. Your feedback is always welcome. My website, again, is KarenJaneCasey.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. When you go to my website, you'll see valuable information relating to domestic violence, valuable resources a person might need. But also, you'll see information about the books I've written. My Dear Rosa Jean, Mystery at Candace Bay, Granny Babysits the Mischievous Five, and they are all available on Amazon.com, Kindle, and Barnes & Noble Nook. As I mentioned earlier, you can also go to Karen Jane Casey on YouTube and see all of the videos from all of my podcasts. If you go there, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, that's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. Well, thank you and God bless.